Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Making Life Changes Urban Gardening Channel. Today we're going to be harvesting tomatoes, all kind of different tomatoes from beef steak, beef eater tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, Rucker tomatoes, and some of our tomatoes are going to be several pounds. So you're going to get to see some huge harvest here of tomatoes. It's summer here in Houston, Texas in zone 9A, but in Making Life Changes we're still harvesting tomatoes all summer long and you can too. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video but before I do make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell so you don't miss any of my updates for future videos harvesting tomatoes we do urban garden here at making life changes and we use the principal method called square foot gardening which means we can grow a lot of vegetables a lot of food here in a really small space this whole entire area that you see right here full of tomatoes is taken up by one beef eater also known as a beef steak tomato plant and let me tell you beef eaters or beef steaks are delicious they're heirloom organic tomatoes uh, and they get really really large some of them can get up to three four pounds we've heard of some being as much as five pounds this season we've harvested one that was two and a half pounds and we think we have a few here that might even break that record that we're going to harvest today now, bee feeders are just fantastic plants because they're hardy, uh, they're robust, and they put out a lot of fruit. Most tomato plants are indeterminate, and so they just continue to grow basically like a vine, and you want to clip the suckers off and get rid of them so you have larger fruit. But with a beefsteak bee feeder, you can leave a few suckers on there because the plant puts out such large tomatoes that it's not really going to affect much. You're still going to get huge tomatoes like this even if you have a few suckers on the plant if you take all the suckers off you're going to get massive tomatoes so we're going to clip some of these i'm going to show you what they weigh and we're going to show you uh, uh, what they look like when we get in here and knowing which tomatoes ready now as you see we have some tomatoes here that are a little bit yellow this one's this one here is not ready this one's kind of on the verge, and we may actually take it just because we're going to let it finish up inside the house. We've been canning tomatoes, and this month alone, we've already done over three cases of tomatoes. And we're going to be putting up some videos on that. I'll share a link at the bottom of this video as well, too, to uh, show you all how to can. So let's go ahead and start clipping. Now, I've got my clippers out here. You always want to use some nice, clean clippers. We use alcohol and sanitize these to make sure we're not, not taking any other... Uh, germs or anything, uh, bacteria from other plants. And what we like to do is we like to clip a little bit of the stem. And so I'm going to keep these in here so they can vine ripe and finish ripening a day or two uh, inside the house. That is just a beautiful tomato. Let's see how much this one weighs. It looks like it's about it's three quarters of a pound just on this one tomato. So we're going to take some of these. This one's good right here. Clip. Even some of the smaller ones. Now one thing you notice here is, is this was what we call sucker that grew off the main stem. And since there's no other tomato or anything growing off of this, when I clip it, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the rest of this. And it's just taking away nutrition from wherever else the stem is growing. So I just cleared that whole space up. I'm going to grab this one here. Nice tomato. Even this tomato back here. I want to be careful not to damage any of the other tomatoes that I have. Let's see how much this one weighs. That's a pretty good sized tomato too. Now that's, uh, looks like it's about 10 ounces. So pound is 16 ounces, another three quarter pound tomato. Got a nice one back over here. And you can tell heirloom because see the lines in it. And this is organic, not perfectly round, but let me tell you, these are delicious. Great on your sandwiches. Now I want to be careful over here. This one has two tomatoes growing together. I want to make sure that I don't damage this other tomato. And I just take it off on this side so I can leave that other tomato growing. We could go ahead and take this one off. It's, it's, it could be here another day. I think I'm going to leave it yeah. one more day. This one now, we have a few back over here we can take. And I see there's some big ones right back over here. I'm going to get this one. Nice tomato. And there is a huge tomato back over here that I'm going to attempt to get to. 
<laughs> it is really, really, really big. I'm going to have to get back here a little bit with my hand, and I can see it. Let me pull this up. This is a massive tomato. You can see it right here at the Oops, vine. One. Yeah, we have to be careful because we have this one growing off of it too. So we have to make sure that we take the right tomato, and that one needs to get right in there. There we go. Oh, Clipped wow. it. This is a big tomato. Now half of it, nice and red, this half right here could use a little bit more ripening, but I didn't want to leave it on the vine because I don't want it to get soft. And so I want it nice, firm, and hard. It's okay to have a little bit of splitting. This is normal. This is just from the plant growing a little too fast. And you can take a look at it here and see beautiful, beautiful big tomato. Let's see how much this one weighs. Wow. This one's... This one's well over a pound. It's like it's about uh, 18, 20 ounces. So we're talking about a pound and a quarter, almost a pound and a half right here. Not the biggest tomato we've had this season, but pretty close. And we have one way back on the other side I'm going to go get as well. Boy, that is a huge one. Wow. Look at that. That one, that is a monster tomato. Wow. That probably weighs uh, several pounds. It is big. It is absolutely huge. This one is not quite, it's on the borderline of being ready, but she left a little bit of the stem on there. So we'll set inside the kitchen and uh, it'll finish ripening. Uh, and it'll turn nice bright red. And this one too big. Yeah. I wish they had a little pepper down there, Phil. Now see, we got a couple of these on here that are green. But this one right there is nice and red. Don't pull them off uh, like some people do. Use a pair of clippers, uh, snippers. It's much better on the plant. How about this? Now you see this one here still has a little bit of green left in it. I would say leave it on there till tomorrow. This plant over here on this side is our Rucker tomatoes. Ruckers are great for canning. We've actually been canning the beef steak along with the Ruckers because it's been getting so many tomatoes we, we can't eat them all and giving some to our neighbors as well. These are great tomatoes. We've got a couple right here that are ready to harvest. Make sure I don't be real careful to make sure I don't damage any of the other tomatoes. Look how nice red that is. Now this is our Roma tomato plant and you can see I've got it trained going up this trellis. Roma is like the bush and so it's not your typical vine plant. Um, now the white on there that you see is denatured earth that we put on because we had some uh, worms getting in tomatoes. We put denatured earth down and it took care of them. This plant's getting close to the end of its life cycle. As you can see the leaves are starting to turn. Uh, this yellow everywhere and kind of a, almost a black. Uh, this plant's been alive for close to nine, ten months. So all this here is one plant. As you can see, it's huge, and I'm growing it in a, a grow bag, this black grow bag down here. Um, just absolutely a, a great way to grow, especially if you have limited space. Big harvest there. Like I said, this white's the nature earth. It just rinse off. It's really, really good. Dimoticulous earth uh, uh, is also uh, uh, what it's called. And uh, more ch uh, tomatoes down there. Yeah, let me hold it here. There we go. Look at beautiful. These are great for salsa. That one's not quite ready yet. This one's good. Yeah, these are great for salsa, pico de gallo. Um, there's a bunch of tomatoes on this plant. I uh, just can't even tell you how many. We've been harvesting. We've been harvesting tomatoes here for weeks straight uh, off of this plant. Okay, we finished harvesting all of our tomatoes for today. And as you can see, we've got about eight pounds of tomatoes that we just pulled off these two plants. Uh, beef feeder, beef steak tomato, they're both called the same thing, um, interchangeable as far as the name, and the Rucker tomatoes. Uh, we're going to can up most of these. We'll keep a few of them for sandwiches. Um, and this is coming every single week. We're getting a bunch of these. This is something that you can do at your house. Even if you uh, live in the city like we do, we're here in Houston, Texas in zone 9A1. And uh, so we get a good climate, good growing seasons. Really, we can grow almost all year round. The summer can be a little tough and in a few weeks in the winter, 
but we're able to overwinter and keep our plants alive most of the year. Tomato plant's actually a perennial plant. Most people don't know that. They think it's an annual plant because they think that it's going to grow and die uh, by time schedule, but really it's the weather that kills the plant. If you can keep it alive when it's hot and when it's too cold, you can keep a tomato plant alive for years, but they don't produce as much after they did the first year. So year two, year three, they start degrading. But what you can do is, is you can take these things called suckers that are running off the plants, and you can actually clone them and make a whole new tomato plant. I'm going to show you how to do that as well in another video, and uh, and we'll be making some of those and eventually add a link to that as well. Stay tuned to our channel, and if we've helped you, don't forget to uh, go ahead and subscribe if you hadn't already done so. Click like and hit the reminder bell as well too so you get our updates. Now remember, uh, making life changes and gardening go hand in hand with God's Word. God wants us to be self-sufficient, particularly in these times. That's why the ministry is making life changes, because we want to make real changes that help, real changes that look back to our original diet that was in Genesis, where God created all things good, and they were, they were good for us to eat that were vegetables, fruits, uh, herbs. Uh, we weren't meat eaters back then before the flood. And so God wants us to return to that same diet. So there's a benefit in eating lots of vegetables, lots of fruits, and filling your diet with those good things. Because God wants us in all things to prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prosperous. God bless you. I am Making Life Changes, and you can too. Make sure you visit us at our main website, makinglifechanges.org, and sign up for our free newsletter. And then follow us socially on Facebook at Making Life Changes Ministries and Instagram at Making Life Changes.